Why, therefore, should man's first flight to the moon be a matter of national competition? Why should the United States and the Soviet Union, in preparing for such expeditions, become involved in immense duplications of research, construction, and expenditure? Surely we should explore whether the scientists and astronauts of our two countries, indeed of all the world, cannot work together in the conquest of space. This summer, the Baker Institute sent nine students from five different universities to participate in a special uh, space intern program in Moscow. Uh, they participated with about 40 other students uh, from Russia and from around the world. I met with the, uh, the president of Bauman Moscow State Technical University in the spring of this year and uh, came to an agreement on the program and uh, they were very anxious to have us participate and uh, we were very pleased that we got a number of outstanding candidates uh, that applied to be a part of the program. And I actually got an email from one of my professors the week that the, that the application was due. I uh, was extremely interested in it and uh, spent a frantic 48 hours putting everything together, uh, submitted it on time, and, and uh, two months later I was, I was going to Moscow. So the trip was uh, two, week, two weeks in Moscow, and it was essentially we were going to go over and do a project that was space related. Um, I didn't know what exactly, I had no idea, I just knew it was uh, in another part of the world that I've never been to before. I think as we look to the future and space exploration and where we want to go to the moon or Mars or wherever we want to go beyond Earth's orbit, I think uh, we're going to have to do that working with international partners just as we have on the space station. Well, for this trip, what I really wanted to do was meet other, other university students from around the world who were interested in the same sort of thing, get a feel for what the international community thought about manned space flight and where the, the next generation of engineers who, would I, who I would be working with, what they thought about the situation, and where they, where they thought we would be going in the future. As we look to the future, we want to get our young engineers and scientists, uh, give them a good understanding of the benefits of that and the Moscow Summer Intern Program was really designed to achieve that objective. Um, you can make friends here in the, in the States or wherever you live very easily, but to have those friends outside of your home country is a bit more difficult. Throughout the program, we went to a whole lot of different uh, Russian space facilities. We went to the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, we went to Mission Control Moscow, we went to Zvezda, which is a Russian company that makes all of their spacesuits and makes uh, ejection seats for their, for their fighter aircraft. Uh, we also went to some of the Bauman facilities. There was one where they had a, uh, a Russian rocket from the 60s or 70s that they had dissected. It was, a, it was a teaching facility where you could basically go and see into every component of the rocket. They were all uh, dissected open so that you could see how the inside worked. Uh, you could see what the inside of the fuel tanks looked like. You could see what the inside of the uh, control systems looked like, all the piping, the wiring, all of that. But the best for me was definitely Mission Control Moscow. On the bus right there, they asked us to come up with some questions that we'd like to ask cosmonauts. We found out that they had scheduled three cosmonauts to, to speak with us while we were uh, at Mission Control Moscow. And we got to the, uh, the control room. We're on this second tier looking down at, the, uh, at all the control computers. There's the map on the wall that shows the position of the ISS moving across. And as we get closer and closer, we can see the, we can see the timer counting down to when contact's gonna be made. I went back uh, that night, got on the internet and, and told all my friends, I just, I just went and talked to some cosmonauts on the ISS. It was, it was an absolutely amazing experience. Every day was, was pretty fully scheduled. Uh, there were either classes to be taken or there were uh, excursions uh, into cultural centers. So after we finished the day's activities and after we had dinner at the hostel, we'd go back to the classrooms and be taught by astronauts and scientists and professors on ballistic systems, uh, launch systems, landing systems. We took a three-hour uh, boat ride on the Moscow River 
up and down and seeing all the fantastic buildings that, that the Russians had built in the past. To see, to see what other people are doing and to see how they do it at, at a younger age is helpful to form what you want to do with your life and where you want to do it and how you interact with other people. It's uh, very important that the Baker Institute have the resources to continue this program. Uh, extending a program where we could bring the students over from uh, those countries uh, to uh, participate in a similar program here at Rice University and uh, with the uh, Johnson Space Center would be of equal benefit to those young people in those respective countries. Traveling to Moscow with these uh, brilliant students was certainly one of the highlights of my life. I'm very proud to be a part of the Baker Institute and part of this program to bring uh, students together to work on international space issues, to watch them in action, working with each other, establishing friendships. Gives me hope for the future of the uh, international space programs, the space station, and uh, the future of peace between the U.S. and Russia. For more information on this or our other programs, please visit www.bakerinstitute.org.